Good day, everyone. We have the great privilege to have Nathan Reich today with us. He's a world champion in 2019, Pan American Games gold medalist, also world record holder in the mile, um, 25 years old, just looking as sharp as ever. Uh, how, yeah. how are you doing in quarantine, yeah. Nathan? <clears throat> Too kind, Ben. Uh, yeah, all has been all has been well. I mean, I'm super fortunate to be living on an island in Victoria, and uh, the cases have it hasn't got horrible here yet, so I'm still able to use the track and get a lot of my training. I can't lift how I'm used to, which um, that's a very minor detail. So just trying to stay safe, and uh, I don't really go outside uh, for anything other than training. So you're you're saying that the, the the track facility is still open for you. You're able to train not again, not exactly the same, but do you have your coach with you? Do you have other teammates uh, as well uh, on the track? Uh, no. So I've just been training completely solo um, since my coach Heather Henninger is a is a national coach. I believe they're requested not to um, coach us during this time, as in like coach us like at the track. Um, so I haven't seen them since. I think for two weeks, yeah. Um, which is, uh, I mean, I think it's, I, I think it's for the best. It's unfortunate, you know. I uh, I love my coaches, and so it thinks I don't get to kind of have the social aspect. But um, luckily, we have a lot of technology where I can kind of chat with them. So you, you um, chat yeah, with you chat with Heather on a on a frequent basis, right? Yeah, I know. Yeah, she's. I mean, obviously, she's my coach, but she's also a really good friend of mine, and uh, you know, she uh, she knows me more than just an athlete, so. Our, our relationship is really important just you know in everyday life as well and so um i think really trying to figure out my headspace and what i want to do because at this time i think training should be fun and you, it should be the less stressful part of your day and so that's right. kind of the mentality i'm taking into this uh uncharted territory do you realize that you're uh, uh you're quite lucky <laughs> just to be yeah. able to to train at this time do you feel that um that potentially hopefully not but potentially the island gets uh gets doesn't get better that they might close the facility is that something that they've been talking about i think that's definitely a possibility um but I you think, can still run in the, in the streets yeah so yeah i think that's the one thing i think i'm fortunate on a couple fronts number one being a runner because we can yeah the track is nice to have but i can still if i have, a, I have my garmin watch and i can you know put cones out and uh still do basically the same workout than i would do on the track and so i think uh having an individual sport we're very fortunate because um, i don't need teammates i mean it's great to have them at practice but they're not un, you know i don't need them to do my session um and so and i train majority by myself anyways um just because i'm kind of in the middle uh, so i train with most able body athletes so I'm kind of in limbo as it comes to times. Okay, now tell us the truth. How do you really feel? No Paralympics in 2020. You're the world champion. 2019 was an incredible year for you. You were expecting to do great in Tokyo this summer, not in 2021. How, how, is, how are things mentally, physically? How are you feeling? Yeah, I think um, I think there's two fronts to that. I think if you if you would have asked me within 48 hours of the initial um, release statement from Canada, um, I would tell you I was numb, and I've only been I've only had this numbness feeling uh, twice in my life, and the other was when I got injured. Um, and yeah, so that, it was a very interesting because I I had a feeling it was gonna get postponed just because everything that was going on. Um, but I think when it actually hits you, it's like a slap in the face. Right. Where, um, you kind of just don't know because everything's it's like, will there be meets? Will I have a season? There's just so many things are up in the air. Like I know they wanted to help us, and so there's less less un uncertainty. But honestly, there's still a lot of un uncertainty. So, um, but now my headspace is really good. Um, I'm just focusing on the day, and I think I'm um, trying to find the silver lining in everything. And the silver lining for me is that. Um, you know, my, my, my family's safe and uh, I'm able to train. And so I, I, I can't control this virus. I can only con uh, control what I put in day in, day in and day out. And each day kind of brings something new. And so I've just kind of been focused on that. And, you know, I'm, I feel I'm more than, than just an athlete. So 
I've been focusing on connecting with some of my teammates, doing some Instagram lives, um, doing a lot of, a lot of mindfulness, um, as well as uh, writing a lot. That's a passion of mine that I have. And, um, and so, yeah, that kind of allows me to do some things that I'm not always allowed to do. Yeah, are you? Uh, I'm curious. Are you alone at the moment? Because uh, I believe uh, your fa- some of your family are in the U.S. Uh, are you? Are you? Uh, do you have a roommate? Who's uh, Who's with you? Or is your? So I have one. Routine? I I have one roommate. She's my. Uh, she's one of my teammates. Uh, Olivia Romano. Um, and so her and I are here. I I had a couple more roommates, but they all ended up going home. So. So um, it's just it's just her and I right now, and so we have kind of a little bit different schedules, so we don't see each other as much. Like I kind of I've been staying up a little bit later to write, and then waking up a little bit later in the morning and training in the afternoon, um, because a guy who grew up in Phoenix, Arizona, likes the heat a little bit. So I, yeah. I like to work out when it's the hottest possible part of the day. Um, but yeah, I think it's you know I I've, I've been spending a lot of time just kind of uh, you know in my own head. I think. Uh, I, I kind of process things a little bit slower. And so um, I, I kind of think that time alone is really important because I think the most important conversations you have is with yourself because, um, you know, uh, you can't you can't mute that. So I yeah. think being okay with what's going on was kind of that first hurdle to, to get over. Absolutely. And sorry, Nate, if you hear a, a little one uh, screaming in the back, it's uh, – it's my, my routine nowadays is full-time dad. So there's someone saying, daddy, daddy, where are you? Anyway, uh, <laughs> I'm used to it now. It's a little different. Anyway, um, I, I, was curious, I was wondering, are you, um, is there something that you're really missing on, uh, on your daily routine? I, I know you were talking about the, the, the weight part, but is there, like, is there something that you, you're really craving for or something that you can't do right now? It doesn't have to be sporting-wise, but something that you uh, – we've been missing over the past couple of weeks? Yeah, I think uh, anyone who knows me well knows that I think I'm a little bit funny sometimes at the track. And so I miss uh, taking jabs at my teammates and right. then taking jabs at me. And, uh, you know, I'm, uh, and I miss just like being able to talk to my coaches. Um, you know, they're, uh, you know, like I said, they're an important part of my training, but m- the personal growth I've gone or that I've had over the last 18 months, they've been a huge, huge part of that. And, I've uh, been, you know, uh, helping arms the entire way. And, uh, and so I think I just miss those relationships. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's great. We can still talk, but it's just uh, not the same. Yeah, yeah, I, I hear you. Um, you've shown um, as an individual, but certainly as an athlete, a lot of uh, resilience. And I, um, I, was, I was curious to hear from you um, um, if you, uh, if you could relate a story with resilience in your, in your sporting journey. Uh, if, you, if you had anything to share with uh, any, or any tips uh, for uh, our audience. Yeah, I think I think uh, the one that most comes to mind is I had just finished my college career and I was very disappointed with the way it had turned out. Uh, I thought there was more in the sport for me than finishing dead last in the conference final as a senior. And I was uh, kind of spiteful, to be fully honest with you. And I just I knew there was more. I had faith that there was more in this sport for me. And um, I think my why had started to evolve, not just to be the best, but to make a difference, uh, you know, in people or individuals who had injuries similar to me. And I just wanted to connect with those people. And I never thought the, Par- the Paralympics would be a route. But, um, and so I had no kind of uh, direction at that time. And I just said, I'm going to train as hard as I can um, for the 2020 Olympics. And I'm going to get as fast as I can. And, um, and then all of a sudden, I, uh, my mom emailed Carla Nichols, who's the pair lead. And um, we found out that there was a classification for me. And um, I remember when, after I got classified, that it was, it, it was such a, it was like the world stood still for a couple of minutes, um, you know, because I think for so long, I wanted to be successful, like some of the relatives in my family. And uh, for a long time, I felt like, I wasn't doing that, um, but I think uh, you know you learn through being resilient to the ups and the downs of sport. That uh, you know, if you believe that you can do something in the end, you just gotta keep keep to the journey. I think uh, the journey is so zigzag. You know, we all want to feel like it's this straight flat road, but mm-hmm. uh, in real life, it zigzags, has speed bumps. You know, there's sometimes when you're on your knees and you just don't know what what you want to do or what's 
what's going to happen. And so I think uh, one thing for me is if I didn't chase my dream, uh, then that would be a huge failure. But if I chased my dream and didn't achieve it, then that would be a small failure that, that I could live uh, the rest of my life with. And so I, I just, I don't want to have big failures in my life where I didn't go for it. And so that was something that I had a conversation with my mom and that's what we chose to do. Um, and yeah, I think it, 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 it's hard when you're going through your savings account and, um, you know, it's, uh, you want that money for the future, but um, also you don't want to sleep, sleep, walk through life. You want to, you know, experience the things that uh, you feel like you deserve to experience the things that you've always wanted to do. And so that's kind of uh, the, the approach I took. Well, well said. I, yeah, I was always, uh, and you went that way. I was always uh, wanted to ask you how you got involved in para sports. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a great story. And, and did you have a chat with your, uh, your parents about, or uh, have, have your parents, since they were um, in international athletes uh, as well uh, for US and Canada, uh, have they had an event, not maybe in the Olympics, but um, a big event postponed or completely canceled? Have they, have they experienced that? Have they, have they chatted with them? Yeah, I've, I've definitely chatted with them. They, uh, they've never really had this experience. Um, but I think the most important thing that my mom said is that, uh, you know, don't worry about that long-term goal. Just focus on every day. And she's like, uh, you know, things will start to fly by if you're focusing every day and you're training hard and doing everything you can be. And she knows for me, um, character is the most important thing for me. Like, I would rather have extremely high character and finish last in the Paralympics than have no character and win. Um, and so that's something that she just reminded me to stay true to who I am. Uh, you know, um, this sport doesn't define who I am. And Um, you know, I'm more than just an athlete. And so that, I think she just re reminded me that and that there's a lot of things I can still do. I can still write. I can still connect with all my teammates. I can do all these Instagram lives. And I love to interview people. And so that's a, that's something I'm very amateur at and something that I uh, want to learn more about. And so um, I kind of just throw, my, throw myself into it. It's usually how I go. And uh, I think I've been, been having fun. And, you know, it's, I have such great teammates with Marissa Paps and Brene and Greg and Uh, so many others and so uh, I think if it wasn't for them uh, keeping me laughing but also um, keeping our head above water because I think so many people are, have been negative about this but I think at some point the Paralympics are, are going to happen and we need to ask that question what's next what do I need to do that's safe to uh, you know um, get me to that high performance fitness that I want to be you know in the summer of 2021 because at the end of the day like still one of my goals is to win gold and, um, and you know rep represent my country proud so that's uh, you know that's still uh, something that's uh, driving me every day. Wow great okay um, are you available to do a quick trivia with us? Of course. Yeah it's not going to be easy I'll, I'll, I'll admit. Okay. I, you always have I, hard questions. So. Yeah, I went hard on you. There's, there's one that I think you're going to... It's more like an education. So not only for you, but for, for everyone watching on social. Um, okay, so first question. Um, which, um, which Canadian has won the most uh, Paralympic medals in para-athletics? And if you do know, uh, how many medals? Aye, there is. No way. I'm, I, I'm going to guess it was probably a swimmer. Um, uh, no, I, I, I'm talking para-athletics. Oh, oh, so your para, sport. Para-athletics. Um, I want to say Brent Lakatos. I'm not sure how many medals. He, well, I, you know what? It's probably right on the man's side. Uh, okay. but, I, but I'm actually not 100% sure. Uh, however, the answer is uh, Chantal Petitclair uh, with 21 Paralympic medals in five Paralympics. And she is also the athlete who has won the most medal uh, by any female in para-athletics in the world, with 21, which 14 of them were gold. Okay, and it's not easy, but it's just more like an education piece. Um, second, second question. These, I, I, by the way, I had, I had no clue what the answer were. Okay. <laughs> uh, what years? Uh, what year was the? Um, uh, The, the, the para-athletics program extend beyond just athletes with spinal cord injury. What Paralympic Games? So the first Paralympics were in 1960 in Rome. 
And they're at, but the question is, so, so an athlete such as you, when was, was he, or she, was he, uh, was they available uh, for, for the Paralympics? Uh, I want to say 1996, but I feel like I'm completely off. It, it was a lot before, yeah, like 1976. Okay. You were, you had the right okay. six. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. So before that, it was only spinal cord injury, and in 1976, um, all uh, visual impaired, um, amputee, and they all got in air athletics in 1976 for air athletics. Uh, last question. Um, Beth, I'm not sure. Have you ever run a ma marathon? I have not. Okay. Well, that's again a hard one. When was the first marathon at the Paralympics? Um, let's go with 1984. I'm just like firing. 1984. You got it! <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, that's great coincidence. <laughs> well, I think I think you needed. You see, that's that's the beginner's luck. You got it. You nailed that I one. I definitely was. <laughs> yeah, yeah and, but. You know, I, I mean, that's, that's pretty amazing. So I think you're, you're on the, you, you finish on a great note, my friend. Um, so I think you shared it. My last question for you was, um, what, what was the ultimate dream for Nate for Tokyo and beyond? What's, what would you like to accomplish uh, within, the, within your sporting career? Yeah, I think, I think uh, on the track, it would be uh, winning gold in uh, 2020 and, uh, you know, then winning gold again uh in 2024 and then that's 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 where i'll leave it um i think off the track is just um do my best to inspire the next generation of athletes as well as help for the paralympic movement i think you and i have had a couple of conversations where we want the olympic medal to be worth the same as the paralympic medal and um, i think we're definitely going in the right direction um you know but uh, i still think we have some work to do and i think i i always um the motivation for me has always been if I had a son or a daughter or if one of my siblings got injured, um, I want them to have opportunities that were better than that I have today. And I have some pretty amazing opportunities. And so I think the generation before us did, did so much for me and all of my teammates. And if I, if I wasn't trying to do the same thing they did for me, then um, really, what am I doing? Um, and so that's, um, that's always been my, my inspiration and my siblings. As I mentioned, that we were probably my number one motivator um, throughout my career, and so um, that's that's probably what I would go with. Well, you know, we wish you all the best, uh, and we uh, I, I I like to hear that uh, you mentioned Paris 2024. That makes me uh, excited. Excited. Uh, we again, we wish you all the best, and on behalf of the Canadian Paralympic Committee, we uh, thank you, and we want you to stay safe and well. And we will be there in 2021 and beyond to, uh, to cheer and support and, and hopefully uh, uh, be there to, uh, to, uh, to, to offer what you need to succeed. All the best, Nate. Thanks for your time. Thank you so much for your time, Ben. I really appreciate it. Bye-bye.